Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk on the topic of first conference on blueprints of hierarchical CSET structures. CSET standing for Computer Security Incident Response Team. My name is Vilius Benetis. I'm uh, working uh, daily for NRD Cybersecurity from Lithuania, North Europe, part of European Union. And you can find me on LinkedIn in case uh, further on discussion uh, would evolve. Uh, as you're gonna see from my presentation. So uh, about myself, uh, my areas of expertise, uh, expertise is uh, working with CSETs uh, and SOC establishment or modernization. So there are some abbreviations of the countries where I actively been involved in, uh, in their success or it's still ongoing projects currently with uh, Kenya, Barbados, Afghanistan and some other countries. And in that work, uh, with my colleagues, with uh, our team, we use different methods. As well, we look not only about the technical engineering of um, uh, team, you know, what skills you have to have, how you automate it, and what mandate you run, but as well in the governance framework, we need to look at uh, how countries uh, organize their CSET communities and uh, in order to better our, our particular team. For that reason, um, uh, what we have noticed over uh, several years, and we start looking into it, it's uh, regarding the challenge of CISA national ecosystems. So if we agree that we are around 200, uh, space for 200 national uh, CSATs, because that's approximately the number of the countries existing in the world, and there's no CSATs on the moon or on the Mars, so we would expect around uh, such number finally to reach of the national CSATs. And then uh, I was thinking where to place the threshold, but probably if the country reaches more than 2 million uh, population, then there appears that uh, one single CSAT is not sufficient in the country, similar like single hospital probably is not sufficient for the country uh, for health uh, problems. And then we start to look at uh, what we as uh, sectorial CSATs, maybe. Maybe they are collective CSATs. A very interesting story uh, if we look at the Netherlands, for example, where, to my understanding, municipalities uh, join together, which are not very strong or resourceful organizations. And then they said, okay, collective, it's not a negative word, what comes from my background as a Soviet Union uh, country for 50 years, uh, but rather it's about joining our forces in order to achieve a joint uh, objective. As well, naturally, uh, more mature organizations or those who want to organize themselves more properly, they, they start to establish individual uh, CSATs inside internal CSATs or calling them SOCs or calling them in another way. Or as well in um, uh, such economies, it's natural that MSSP managed security service providers as CSETs or cyber SOCs or SOCs uh, start to appear and provide uh, the monitoring, uh, incident response services as a service model. And we hear more and more about uh, MSSPs uh, currently. Depending on the country, in the UK it's more developed, probably in Switzerland it's less developed uh, by uh, such ecosystem. But we have uh, these names uh, and uh, the question are they all independent or should they have responsibilities to each other? And if they are responsibilities, what kind of responsibilities? So, of course, if you think about uh, internal CSAT or MSSP, and when I'm thinking about national CSAT, so probably there's no um, responsibilities from uh, internal CSAT to national CSAT. Uh, and maybe national set uh, is, is, is mandated to do something to, to help uh, local internal CSET, but maybe not. So, but uh, as soon as uh, national legislation starts to be implemented in the country, then, then which starts to talk about sectorial sets and their responsibilities, national set, their responsibilities, or maybe joining and overlapping, maybe academical CSET becomes national set uh, or moved in some uh, place. And these discussions and overlaps and the power play starts to uh, raise the question. So uh, personally, I felt uh, such questions raised in bigger countries than 2 million, uh, especially they are painful, I believe, in the countries of uh, 1 billion size or 200 million size or 
100 million size uh, organizations or countries, such as uh, could be uh, South Africa, where governance frameworks are quite um, developed, um, India, uh, and then I was approached with such question from India, please advise what would be the relationship between sectorial versus national versus individual. It's tricky what to advise to country 1.3 billion uh, citizens. Uh, and then uh, Wales, uh, I would say Nigeria, probably similar questions, Egypt, similar questions, uh, and other places. Even Lithuania, my country, which uh, we are 3 million people, the financial sector set uh, questions, you know, what is the role of uh, sectorial set? would be what is not covered by national side or individual teams in the financial sector. When we are becoming more and more FinTech uh, hub for, as we provide very easy license compared to other European countries for electronic money uh, transactions and operations. So uh, by looking at that, this topic and then validating and the, some of these discussions that I mentioned happened in the GFC, Global Forum for Cybersecurity Expertise, uh, one year ago, uh, then I initiated uh, such thinking process and discussing. So maybe if we draw some interrelationship uh, maps, it would be beneficial for all of us uh, because then it's not clear what roles can play or there's no tools how to justify where sh what should sit in a particular country then it sometimes uh, slows down the, um, uh, the establishment of CSETs because uh, maybe somebody misunderstands where the borders uh, sit and then start to suppress small organizations or, or and, uh, and other questions. So this GFC work was not progressing uh, too much. I was expecting um, to present this topic uh, in live in Canada and as well having uh, physical discussions with CSET people or other nations people in the same topic on the GFC group B uh, talk it didn't happen so uh, we are where we are I believe the topic is relevant and it's going to be relevant for, for many countries in the future so having at least something like this and uh, then initiating further discussion would be uh, relevant so as I mentioned, the objective is to assist and inspire CSETs in the countries to find effective ways of partnering and developing cooperative mandates of CSETs in the country, saying, you know, this is my place, this is your place, let's work jointly uh, and understand why something finishes here. Um, in government organizations, it's uh, uh, at least here in the territories where, where I work mostly, government agency usually says what they do, but they do not tell, tell what they don't do. So sometimes you need to read in between the lines. For example, do they work for the residents of the country? You know, can some would if old lady would call the national set or sectorial set would they answer? And how they justify whom they are covering, whom they don't cover, and how to ensure if uh, every organization in the country are covered by national set, and uh, if a national organization like bank is covered by sectorial set. So whom? Uh, an organization should call any of those options because they're under the same realm um, or this particular sequence or particular interactions. So there should be, naturally, there should be some internal national agreements between organizations, how they hand over, how they share, what, who picks up the first call, how, uh, how they partner uh, in the incidents, uh, etc. So uh, the objective is to provide some pictures uh, and uh, create some knowledge um, of known unexpected scenarios for either two level national organization or three level national sectoral organization interaction. So first of all, uh, probably it's important to, to focus on the mandate of each organization as a CSET. So there we talk about authority uh, which is handed uh, to that organization. So uh, this particular set is uh, provided authority uh, to supervise incident resolution, coordination, or et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do, can we block something? Uh, can we uh, call, uh, introduce police, uh, policing functions or policing, a policing actions uh, on particular incidents or, or situations? Uh, along, uh, there always come responsibility. 
So if you have uh, power, uh, they have to as well uh, be responsible for how they use the power as well where they apply the power because often that power is given only to them. So if they do not uh, use that power where they should or possibility, for example, the national set uh, receive some data from uh, Tim Kimru or shadow server and uh, they are the only ones who can get that data. And so if you don't take that data and they don't share to the relevant uh, stakeholders uh, for better good, for fixing uh, the toxicity, digital toxicity of the country's uh, or digital pollution, uh, that's uh, lost opportunity. And if that's their responsibility, and if you take that as a responsibility because it's declared and, and the sector and the nation or for the individual set, then it's good to measure at the end uh, of the year. Uh, because that responsibility of authority is uh, usually expressed as well or clarified with objectives and tasks. So in the European uh, Union countries, and this directive uh, mentions what kind of sectorial sets has to be established and as well mentions that there has to be clear objectives and tasks uh, and placed for them as well. So let's imagine that when we build something like Lighthouse, we expect that it would uh, fulfill the function and responsibility to, to uh, producing the light beams and uh, in stormy weathers uh, for the boats with uh, lost radio sig signals, uh, they still can guide uh, where to go and how to move according to agreed procedures. Uh, how we look at uh, the world uh, of CSETs and SOCs uh, for here, for us, uh, they are synonymous because we implement the same uh, CSET uh, services model. We know that we are technical teams uh, on implementing uh, the mandate, which comes probably from policy makers or board of directors in organization, uh, which is given to chief security officer or information security officer, or maybe CIO, saying, please take care of the cybersecurity or information security. And then we need a team which serves constituency uh, with incidents detection, coordination, resolution, information sharing, et cetera, in order to protect digital assets. And then working uh, with, uh, and here instantly there's a link uh, to the right to responsible coordination, response coordination for or coordinating of uh, incidents with national side or C side, uh, where it's a question, is it mandated or not? Do I oblige to do that or not? And then uh, of course, each of such organization um, establishes own partnerships, uh, memorandums of understanding with, with law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies, private uh, MSSPs or private organizations, research organizations. And as well for them in the work, they need the international recognition. And uh, as we see in, uh, in the corner, first uh, map, which shows that intensity of uh, such teams, uh, we see that in some territories, there are more of them established and recognized uh, being the members of first. And of course, in some other places, uh, maybe there, there's a blank, there's nothing, but maybe there are such teams, just not members of the first yet, but still I believe such such map is a good indicator um, of the intensity. Uh, so then we'll look at the um, graphically what can be brought in to the picture. So uh, we talk about national set and we call it CSET slash N. Uh, we talk about CSET slash SEC as a sectoral sets, for example, for finance, for energy, for research, for other areas like chemicals or research. Uh, oh, this is one that may be military or defense. And then in the finance sector, uh, we think about uh, organizational CSET. In financial, probably uh, banks uh, individually have their own CSETs. In energy, maybe there's an organization CSET, or maybe it's just a security team in a particular organization. As well as we have uh, um, other teams uh, in each other sector. Here in the drawing, they look but very hierarchical. So it seems that there are some uh, defined uh, obligations of course, if uh, GDPR and uh, national cybersecurity law mandates every organization, especially the sectorial organizations, financial organizations, uh, or because they're critical in organization, uh, critical information infrastructure, they are obliged to report incidents of particular 
process particular sequence and uh, via these obligations uh, it is established who does who needs to do what and uh, uh, and the challenge then becomes if it's three layer so then organization receives incident or handles incident whom they have to report to sectorial to national to both and if to sectorial should uh, sectorial instantly notify national or why that should be the case so uh, the mandate uh, who is responsible for whom uh, the same picture can be uh, shown in another way which allows uh, instead of uh, authority to present more the responsibility uh, as shows this picture so the national CSAT as I mentioned, uh, it covers residents. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, even in Scandinavia and rich countries, uh, it might be that residents are outside uh, the, uh, the mandate of uh, the national uh, set, uh, being that, uh, to my understanding, uh, in Finland, uh, Denmark, even Netherlands, they are outside. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, national CSAT will not help but at least the resources, they are true to themselves that they don't have sufficient uh, resources to cover uh, the needs of the people. On the other hand, uh, the National CSAT of Israel uh, promotes uh, for quite some time, or for two years, uh, that uh, everybody can call them in and they'll be supporting any business, any, uh, any people needs in cybersecurity, any challenges. And then we have again uh, these ecosystems and saying that uh, if it's a bank so it feels uh, under sectorial uh, first first so again this is how first uh, how we uh, because we represent NRD set as well um, how we look uh, at the world uh, and uh, the numbers uh, right now it's 540 teams in first and everywhere where there is at least one team, probably we have this discussion. So what are these typical interactions or expectations? So for um, what we know that first as well developed, updated the, and updated the version until 2.1, I believe a CSET uh, model uh, uh, as this one. And uh, there are typical services what CSET or SOC is providing, but expectation matrix, uh, uh, what is important probably, uh, this is the, this blueprint, I would say. Um, so before jumping into the text, I would like to, uh, for you to look in the picture on the side. You know, the two bears, what are they doing? Are they kissing or are they fighting? You know, it's gonna be both. So um, it's good uh, if we would think and declare the expectation, what is it goes through the head? Is it, uh, you know, what, what I want from another person? Do I want to dominate it? And uh, what is my expectation from another uh, party? So here in the schema I have presented what is expectation from CSET in organization, what they want to do themselves most probably, and then what we expect from other parts that means CSET national or sectorial. And here, uh, then I was thinking, should I separate CSET national and sectorial into separate part? Probably the expectations are quite similar. We just not need to report up, uh, up in hierarchy anymore. So uh, national CSETs, uh, they expect uh, the managing cooperation, reporting, handling services framework, uh, maybe securing security monitoring of all sectors. And then the expectation from another side, uh, from the sites so in organizations, uh, reporting regularly of incident statistics, resolving incidents. So I believe uh, such schema can be taken as initial discussion in the, each other country and uh, seeing does it apply? You know, instead of wasting one hour trying to, to, to build this, take this as an example. And uh, on, even if uh, you want to validate the mandates or if there's some cybersecurity law updates are being discussed and discussed, then this one can be filled in as a, as a table. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, to sum up, it's um, then we think about this national level, sectorial level, organization level. Basically, it's uh, the same question in between all levels. Should there be any mandatory tasks and why uh, in between uh, these teams? From organization up to sectorial, from sectorial up to national, and reverse from national up to sectorial to organization or directly to organization. 
And by trying to work it out, um, I believe there's a good way to reach proper setup, uh, proper collaboration, proper partnership agreements inside the country and uh, moving and growing that trust uh, in ecosystem and building the ecosystem. So um, here I would like to uh, finish that uh, my, this my work is uh, still in progress. Uh, the reason being that I wanted to move it in live discussions uh, on different events, uh, which didn't happen, unfortunately. However, I really expect that for those uh, who are listening and who feel that that something was relevant to you, maybe we can uh, reach out to each other remotely via LinkedIn or the email and then have a you know, Zoom call or Teams call and then discuss what other pictures we can draw and bring out to community in order to reduce the amount of um, fights, uh, power fights, and showing that there's plenty of mandate and it's possible to agree and maybe we have the tools to, for agreement. So thank you very much um, for, for listening. I hope it was uh, interesting and um, I'm looking forward uh, to your feedback and uh, let's meet in other sessions of West Conference. Uh, thank you.